Well, that was pretty easy. I took out these back two bolts, the top and the, the bottom one there. The front one I loosened it up, and this one here wasn't even connected, so. Pretty easy, just slid off. It's not in too bad shape. I'll still clean this up, get the grease off it, and paint it anyway, so it'll last a little longer. And uh, take some measurements, so I can make up another one of these in the future. It's always the easy jobs that get you. You can see these top two bolts came out no problem. They're fine. The one that's down here in the bottom, the wells broke loose and it basically holds it in here. Probably because all the corrosion and rust and water that was getting into this uh, drum housing. But anyways, between two ratchets, two pieces of pipe, I am slowly undoing that bottom bolt. That's the last troublesome one. Because the one on the other side, that is coming out fine. Four bolts are now out. Let's see, this is disconnected. All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> Here's our little 200M uh, axle carrier or axle housing. Pretty simple. That's pretty cool. You can see how these are elongated here to compensate for tightening your chain and pushing, like driving the axle back. So since we're going to be doing uh, the disc brake conversion, I guess I can take off these cables. Let's see what's going on in here. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty dirty. We'll knock these bearings out too and replace these. Okay, I got the, the, beer, the rear axle housing here. We're going to clean this up, get this all painted and stuff, but first of all, since this is fully seized, I'm going to take off this arm, which is just another, looks like a 10 mil, uh, 10 mil bolt head there. Just pop that off, take off this arm, and then I'm going to punch this through, try to get off that, that pivot right here that's seized. We'll get this out, we'll get this all cleaned up, take some measurements, see how we can get that new caliper. Caliper this over here, see how we can get this fitted. It's a 400 EX caliper. So we'll find a way, find a way to make it work. guys out here in the shed again we're gonna be doing the disc brake conversion on the 200m you can see here I got my 400 EX caliper with the mounting bracket originally when I ordered this I forgot to order this little silver bracket here so that's kind of my fault boy having the brackets kind of nice because it has um, the slider pin for the caliper to allow it to float and then uh, the two mounting holes you can make one by rights but for me it was just easier to spend the 20 bucks and buy the bracket but anyways, what we're going to be doing with this uh, rear axle carrier, I'm going to chop off this little uh, spline piece because it's completely seized anyways. I'm going to chop it off in here. I'm going to take uh, the zip cut grinder. We're going to cut down like almost like a V pattern so we can mount this caliper. So basically the idea is that we're going to modify this housing almost in a V pattern in order for the caliper to sit right here. And once we get the caliper all in place, then the last thing we'll be doing is uh, changing out the rear axle bearings since we got it apart anyways. And then painting all this up. I'll probably cut this off, it's no longer needed. Clean all this, you can see all the rust on it. But yeah, let's get started. I'm gonna get the grinder ready and uh, start chopping this off. Okay, you can see um, I just chopped off that spline part. And all I have done here now currently is I got the axle 
stuck back in. Nothing modified yet. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually fit the, the disc brake caliper on. Oh, actually first I'm going to have to chop this off. You can see that's going to be in the way, sticking out. So we'll start chopping this off and then uh, we'll fit on the disc brake caliper. And then the next thing to do is to start cutting out this housing to fit on uh, my caliper I got here. Ideally I wanted to get some pipe spacers, but with everything going on currently it's a bit hard to shop at the moment. So all I got is some union like nut couplers, I'm using them as like spacers. They're actually close in size and where they're flat they're going to be pretty easy to weld. So the plan is basically to cut a V in this housing and I'm going to weld and support this in place. And on the other side is going to correspond and line up, well when it's cut out, it's going to correspond and line up with the, the rotor that's going to be put here. And then that's pretty much it really. We'll get that nice and supported. We'll uh, measure the offset and make sure we got this centered. And we'll get this nice and supported and then swap out our bearings, paint it all up, and we'll stick it back on the bike. Hey guys, back out in the shed again. I got the, the rotor in place where I want it to. Ideally, you're supposed to have a um, like an axle washer go in between here. But right now with the virus going on, it seems to be hard to track it down. So for the meantime, I'm going to start cutting down this housing and we're going to fit this caliper on. So basically all we're going to do is cut a V right here. Enough so this caliper is just going to start sliding down right onto the rotor. You'll notice my grinder's missing the guard, so I'm going to throw that on now in a minute before it does any cutting, because otherwise it's pretty dangerous to use without the guard. I just had the wire wheel going, this one you put the guard back on it. But anyways, yeah, I'll cut this down and uh, get that caliper right in place. I decided until I get a nice set of spacers, which I still need to get, I'm going to just use the old bearings temporarily so I can mock up the things. However, I need to get the proper size, size spacer because I'm now going to be fitting that disc brake. But anyways, we'll take out these old bearings. Same procedure as before. I'm just taking whatever I got. A hammer, a random piece of pipe here, sticking it in. And just beating out the, the bearings. So I got one more bearing to beat out. Well, uh, I don't really want to grease this all up yet. I'll, I'll clean up the inside because I, I got to weld on some brackets and stuff for this caliper. But uh, we'll clean up the inside here, and uh, I guess throw the new bearings in after we got things mocked up. Hey guys, just wanted to do a little update. I'm going to be doing some welding, so it's probably, probably not the smartest to have this a bit greased up, but I'm going to try it anyways. I got the, the bearings put back in, like I showed, it's very similar, pretty much the same thing as um, the front axle, like when I, in one of my earlier videos. So I got new bearings in this, I got the axle sitting in the, the bearing housing. My friend gave me a piece of pipe with a pretty thick wall. So you can see here, because uh, this 200x rotor, like this um, brake uh, rotor holder, whatever you want to call it, this is shorter than where those two uh, axle lock nuts are going to line up. I need to make this spacer. It's just under like three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to cut one just shy of three quarters of an inch. With this piece of pipe, this is a pretty thick wall you can see. But it's actually the exact same diameter as the inner sleeve that's inside this, this um, holder, rear axle carrier, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to cut this pipe off. And then uh, we're going to fit that here. I'm going to put on two lock nuts, just snug things up. And then we'll flip this over. And um, we'll start welding on our little caliper setup. And we'll see what we can get out of this. Because I need to try to get this bike back together. Okay, guys. The next part of this is uh, fairly simple. 
basically all we're going to do is stick a shim in between get our right alignment we want uh, this pretty centered and we want a good space I'm going to have it basically equal so I'm going to stick other other shim or maybe um, I'll get a few of my feeler gauges I want to put this in the exact location and then I'm going to tack weld this in place and then once this is tack weld in place I'm going to have to do this now in a second while I to lay the camera down but once it's tack welded in place, I got a couple scrap pieces of metal here, a piece of plate, one eighth, some flat bar. So I'm going to chop these up, and then we're basically going to reinforce, like right here, and then over here. We're going to reinforce um, these caliper little spacers I got. Should be pretty easy to weld to. And once everything's lined up, we'll show you the finished product, whether it turns out good or not. We'll find out. As long as it works, better than no break, I suppose. Uh, here's my little spacer. You can see I cut the pipe out. It wasn't perfectly straight, so if you got like um like a chop down, cut down side, you probably do a better job than I did. But yeah, just snug up that. I got another nut to go on. I'm not gonna take this and put it on super tight for now. Like right now, it's just snug because um I'm gonna after this is all welded and stuff, I'm gonna disassemble and just paint this outer housing and the inner section just help keep the rust away. I don't really really care about being fancy as long as it works and helps combat the rust. We'll put this uh, trailer hitch back on the bike and be all good to go. Hey guys, I just wanted to show a quick little video of um, the mock-up. You can see I got the things painted here but I got it dirty again from working on it. This is how it turned out. I don't have, like, you can tell this right now is not fully aligned because this is all loose when I tighten down these nuts based on my welds. And once it gets back to the same tightness I had, it should line up perfectly again. But yeah, I'll get this all lined up. What I'm going to do now is bolt this axle right into the bike, put this back in, and um, reassemble it on the bike because I forgot so I'm missing a nut here. So I need to put that nut in and kind of bolt the axle in before I put this rotor back on and this caliper back on. My welds didn't turn out the best. I don't know if it's just my skills after getting worse again or if it's a mixture of welding on a bit of rusty metal with my cheap welder. But anyways, it's going to work. We'll see how it holds up. I'm going to be doing lots of videos on uh, off-roading and stuff. So, All right, I'll see you guys shortly when it's all bolted back together. Well, you can see how this turned out. It's not too bad. A bit better than what was on it anyways. I still got to um, tighten up the nut that was here. And, of course, this is coming off. So, I'll have to paint that a bit better. But the disc brake is on. You can see I just got around the cable pretty much the same way as it used to be. And then I just got to feed it up here and stick it on there. Fill it up with some brake fluid and then bleed the brakes and now I actually have a functional back brake for once so yeah we'll see how this holds up and uh, I'll definitely put a few more videos if anyone needs or do a quick overview